Hello guys, what is up? It is iPod Touch Bomb. Today we come back to you guys today with a new review, and today I'll be reviewing the Logitech G710 Plus Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Like I said, this is a mechanical gaming keyboard, so it's mostly made for gaming on your PC, but you can just use it for regular typing and stuff. It has mechanical keys, which means you're gonna get a really tactile feedback when you're typing and stuff. It's really nice, in my opinion, personally, for typing and playing games. It's way better than just a standard key um, keyboard, so non-mechanical ones. Um, but this retails for $150 on their website. If you wanna check it out, you can go use the link in the description below and visit their website, or I'll include a link to the Amazon page, so whichever one you wanna purchase it from, There'll be a link in the description below where you can check those both out. But uh, anyways, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into my full review, and I'll tell you if this keyboard is worth your money. All right, guys, so here is the keyboard itself. As you can see, it looks very, very nice. Um, it's backlit. It has the full letter and number pad right there, so it's an entirely full keyboard. Um, it looks pretty snazzy, though, but if you're looking for a lot of stuff in the box, the only things you're going to get are some user information right here and a setup guide. So these are the only two things that you're actually going to get in the packaging when you purchase this keyboard. Not a big deal because it's basically you're buying it for the keyboard, but if you're looking for a lot of accessories, you're not going to get it here. Um, you're also going to get a removable wrist rest right here. Let me just pop this off real quick. It's just a plastic piece that attaches to the bottom of the keyboard, which can be popped on and off. As you can see right here, it's just a wrist rest so that you can rest your wrist on it while you're gaming and your wrist won't have to sit on the sharp edge of the keyboard. I definitely recommend putting it on. You don't honestly have to if you don't want to, but it's definitely recommended if you want to have the most comfortable experience with this keyboard. Let me just go ahead and pop this back on. Um, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is snap it back onto the bottom. It's just hard to line up when I'm standing behind a camera. All right, so there we go. We pop, popped it back on. Let me show you all the keys and features that uh, this keyboard has. So like I said, it has the full letter and number pad right there. It also has six programmable keys on the side. We have G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, and G6 right there. These are all user programmable, so you can program these to be different things. You can have like keystrokes, um, key sequences. These can be ventrilo controls so that you can chat with your team like press G1 to speak or something like that. So they're completely user programmable. I'll show you the software in a second and how you can do it, but uh, these are really cool. I like these a lot. You also have your mode keys up here, mode one, mode two, mode three, and then MR mode. And we also have game mode right here, which if you hit this, the light on that will pop on to indicate that game mode is on. Um, we also have individual LED controls. So what we can do right here is we can Okay, look at the WASD and the arrow keys. We have arrow keys and WASD controls. So as you can see, they just got really, really dim. They're not even on right now. Um, hit it again, they come back on. Hit it once, they get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until they're gone. Um, if you want those on, you can leave those on. You can actually turn the, all the keys off. So let's do this one. This controls all the other keys on the keyboard. As you can see, they're now all completely off. Um, so we can control the WASD and the arrow keys separate of the actual keys, the number and letter keys. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can do this if you're gaming and you want to use the WASD. It's easier because these are backlit, so you'll be able to see them better. Um, likewise with the arrow keys. So that's pretty cool. Or if you don't want those on at all, you just flip those off and you can have all the keys off or just have the number and letter keys on. But uh, it's really up to you. It's really programmable and really customizable. So you'll be, you'll be able to choose whatever you like to do. Also, you're going to get media keys up here. We have our play and our pause. We have our stop. We have our forward and we have our backwards right there, as well as a mute switch right here, which will actually mute your volume automatically. And a volume wheel right here where, where if you scroll it like this up and down, it will adjust your volume. So that's really cool. Also, number pad over here um, is controlled by this keyboard LED lit. So all these keys besides the WASD and the letters are controlled by these individual keys right here. The keyboard also does feature Cherry MX Brown switches on the back, but they're actually more silent than usual. They're, they're made so that they give you the tactile feedback of a mechanical keyboard, but also they want it to be semi-quiet so you're not gonna be distracted by Cherry MX Red switches, or which are really, really loud. Um, they're giving you more of the brown switches, which are somewhat quiet, but also give you that tactile feedback of a mechanical keyboard. So when you're gaming or typing, um, you're going to be able to get the tactile feedback without all the noise that the Cherry MX Blue switches give you. So it's a really nice keyboard for typing and stuff, and it doesn't, it's not too loud, so when you're playing games and stuff, it's not going to be too bothersome with the noise. The Cherry MX Blue switches are really, really loud, and the Cherry MX Brown switches are kind of a good median where they give you the good tactile feedback 
without all the really, really, really loud clicking noises. Also on the back, you can see that we do have a USB input right there. I have my blue snowball microphone currently plugged into that. So it does allow a USB pass through on this keyboard. So you lose two, but you also gain one. So it's pretty much like you're only using one USB port on your computer. You can plug your mouse in right there. I just choose to use my microphone just because it's easier. I have my mouse plugged in the back of my computer. So it's really up to you guys, but it's really nice that they have a USB pass through right there. So let me boot up the software and I'll show you guys what this keyboard can do software wise, what software they give you and how you can, can customize this keyboard to your liking. This is the actual gaming software they give you and it hooks directly up to your keyboard as soon as you plug it in. It's going to give you a few different options. So right here you can see that we automatically have this keyboard selected. Um, it'll pop it up as soon as you plug it in. It'll recognize the drivers and indicate that this, this keyboard is the one that's going to be going with the software. You can select other products from their G series right here, but uh, depending on what products you have in, it'll pop it up right here. All right, so let's go ahead and show you some of the settings. This is just some of the G710. It'll tell you the firmware. Um, it says this device does not support this firmware update, blah, blah, blah. Setup, it'll show you all the stuff about the software and you can set up different profiles for your computer. Um, okay, so let me show you how you can customize the buttons right here. This is how you customize the G1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and 6 buttons on the side. Um, what you want to do is click on the actual key. So let's go to 1. We'll select this down arrow. We'll go to Edit. Okay, so what you can see right here is you're going to get a few different options. You're going to get keystrokes, you're going to get multi key, text block, mouse function, media, hotkey, shortcuts, functions, and ventrilo. So, keystrokes is basically you uh, have like an, let's say you wanted to hit A, well, this would turn into the A button. So, if you clicked like A, you wanted to set this up as A, click this, it'll actually do an A for you. Multi key is like you're going to do a key sequence. So, hey, this is blah, blah, blah and it'll actually do it. So if you're gonna do like a key option in the game, let's say you're playing like Dota 2, you can actually do different keystrokes and record them and, and when you hit the G2 button, it'll actually automatically perform that function for you. Um, and then you have text block right here which will actually type out a text for you. Mouse function will act as your mouse if you click the G, let's say G1 button, it'll actually do left click if you wanted it to. Media, you have, you see play, pause, stop, previous track, next track, volume up, volume down, and mute. You have hotkeys right here, which will do different type of sub commands like control. It'll do copy, paste, undo, redo, zoom in, zoom out, and do different stuff like that. Shortcuts, this will actually open up like, let's say your internet browser, Google Chrome. Um, it'll record up, open up um, Firefox. It'll open up anything that you want to, maybe a text document just by clicking the button. Um, we have functions right here, which will open up your email, web browser, media player, calculator, or my computer. And then finally, Ventrilo is your commands like you can talk and mute and stuff just by clicking these buttons. So the programmable keys on the side are really, really cool. Um, I'm glad they have them on here and the customizable software is really nice because you'll be able to, as you can see, customize every single key on the keyboard that you want to do. Some of them are locked, but most of them you can change and do whatever you want with. So you could even delete a key. Let's say I didn't even want the Z key. Delete, it's gone and it's no longer usable on this keyboard, which is pretty cool. So this keyboard is really, really customizable. Um, and you can also, like I said, it has mode one, two, and three. So you can customize every single key and do it in different modes. So that is really, really cool. I definitely like that feature of the keyboard. And overall, this keyboard is really, really customizable. It fits perfectly to the user and you can use it how you want to, to utilize it best for what you're doing. All right, guys. So in closing, I would definitely recommend the Logitech G710 Plus to keyboard to anybody. Logitech did a great job building this keyboard. Production quality is really high. The price isn't too high. I really like the mechanical keys and the customizable software is really, really awesome. So overall, I would give this keyboard a 10 out of 10 if I did a rating system. It's a very, very, very awesome keyboard and I can't stress enough how much I would recommend it to you guys. I really like this product and frankly, I'd recommend it to anyone who's in the market for a mechanical keyboard or anyone who doesn't have a mechanical keyboard because this is a very, very, very well-made keyboard and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who is looking for a new gaming keyboard. But anyways, guys, if you want to purchase one, check out the links in the description below. I'll put a link to their website as well as an Amazon purchase page. So if you want to purchase one from either of those, check the link in the description below. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video, do it down there, leave a comment and also subscribe. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure to check out Logitech and their keyboard because this thing's awesome. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. See ya.